So this is an introduction to John Dewey, just a little bit about him as a philosopher and as a person. He was born in 1859 and he died in 1952. Dewey was, along with Charles Sanders Peirce and William James, one of the founders of pragmatism. Dewey didn't come from an academic family as James and Peirce did. Dewey came from farming stock in Vermont. His father was a grocer and it might be because Dewey came from such a working class background that he spent so much of his life arguing that philosophy cannot be done in a way that divorces theory and practice. Dewey attended college at the University of Vermont in Burlington, Vermont. He didn't go straight to graduate school, but he became a high school teacher for several years before deciding to pursue a new degree uh, in philosophy, which was the PhD. You see, Graduate school in philosophy in the late 1800s was a new thing. It, it hadn't happened before. And Dewey was in the first graduating class in one of the very first programs at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. While Dewey was at Johns Hopkins, and he did his PhD in two years, I would, uh, I would remember. Uh, it took me a lot longer than that. Uh, but while he was there, he studied logic with Charles Sanders Peirce, and he didn't really take to Peirce's logic class very much, but in later reflections he realizes that Peirce actually had quite a big influence on the way he saw pragmatism. James's work, now that's a different story. James came out with the Principles of Psychology in 1890. This had a profound influence on Dewey, and James' attention to experience, as well as his insistence that philosophy be relevant, to everyday life, to personal experience, would be an integral element of Dewey's philosophy for the rest of his life. Now, Dewey had a very long career. It was over six decades long, and he was a professor, he was a writer, he was a public intellectual, and he was involved in a variety of social and political movements over the course of his life. As with James before him, Dewey was very famous, uh, both on a national and an international level. In fact, there's a story about James that, uh, you know, James was so famous internationally that when Sigmund Freud came to Boston to lecture, he actually asked to have a conversation with William James. And apparently James took a, a long walk with Freud. Uh, and yeah, so that's in a, I think, a James biography, and I don't know the details, but I thought you'd be interested. So. Uh, Dewey was, again, as I was saying, Dewey was quite famous uh, as a public intellectual. He had his face, uh, well, he didn't arrange it, but his face wound up on a U.S. Post postage stamp. He was on the cover of Time magazine, and his obituary in the New York Times when he died was, uh, it ran to 3,349 words, so extraordinarily long uh, uh, obituary for John Dewey. Dewey's fame and influence were so great, in fact, that at one point the Columbia historian Henry Steele Cummager wrote that for a generation no major issue was clarified until Dewey had spoken. Dewey taught in several places over the course of his long career. He, most importantly, he taught at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, the University of Chicago, and for several decades at Columbia University, and that's where he retired in 1930. Dewey published constantly in philosophy. He also published in psychology and education, and, and much of his publications and some of his, his greatest works uh, came after he retired. Dewey was an activist, he was an academic, and he pursued changes which he hoped would improve American educational, political, and social life. How did Dewey make an impact? How did he affect American cultural life? Well, he wrote for academic journals, he wrote for popular magazines, and he wrote for newspapers. He wrote editorials uh, for newspapers. He helped found such important organizations as the NAACP and the AAUP. He debated with politicians and journalists and scholars about important issues of the day. And he wrote about, again, a variety of topics, education, ethics, religion, metaphysics, domestic and international politics, psychology, sociology, and aesthetics. Dewey was a superb teacher, 
and he had a depth of insight, a strong loyalty to his students, and it was a very original thinker in the classroom. He was also a man, I think we can say safely, of extraordinary personal integrity, who often risked his reputation in the defense of others, often when the cause was very unpopular or even short-lived. There are a few philosophical points to be aware of with Dewey, and these maybe think of these as keys to sort of unpacking his philosophy as you read it. One is that Dewey's, Dewey thought that a philosopher's job should not be to solve the problems of philosophers, but to solve the problems of human beings. And this view, I think, is, is best illustrated in his work on education. And Dewey was very, very influential in education, probably more influential in education than in any other field. He, he and his wife invented what became called uh, the lab school, the laboratory school, and this was founded at the University of Chicago, and it approached education as experiential. So the idea here is that children learn best by doing, and, you know, Dewey came up with all sorts of things for uh, students to do, all sorts of ways for teachers to teach, and it, and it had a profound influence on the teaching of education and on educational methods uh, up to this day. Dewey also, you'll find, spends a lot of time in his work attacking traditional philosophical dualisms, dualisms where uh, concepts are radically separated. So, for example, the idea that the mind and the world are radically different things, different substances or different spheres. Um, the, the separation between the psychological and the physical, of course, goes along with that. The separation between subjects and objects, or between values and facts, or between human beings and nature. All of these are dualisms that Dewey sought to uh, argue against and uh, and then in their place, once you've argued against a dualism, uh, you're, you're left with an opportunity. Uh, you have a chance to reconstruct, and Dewey's philosophy is often called reconstructive. And, we're re and so one of his most influential books is Reconstruction in Philosophy. Dewey's philosophical approach was deeply influenced by both Hegel and Darwin. Dewey was born the year that Darwin's Origin of Species was published, and through Darwin and through James, Dewey came to take what we might call an ecological approach to philosophy. We're not subjects encountering objects, rather, we're organisms in transaction with an environment, including one another. Hegel helped Dewey appreciate the profound ways in which historical forces shape concepts and ideas. So for Dewey, philosophy is always of a time, of a place, of a culture, though there are some general elements which may endure across periods. This is sometimes uh, understood as a kind of these two, these two elements in Dewey, his, his, uh, his influence from Darwin and his influence from Hegel, is sometimes understood as a kind of historical naturalism, right? Where naturalism is the view which locates human beings wholly within nature and then takes the results of the natural and human sciences to be some of our best ideas of what there actually is. So that's it for this brief introduction to John Dewey. I hope these facts about Dewey will help you understand and appreciate his work and have a little bit of sense of what he's up to in the work that we're about to read. Thanks.